Hi, this is Tim. In recent videos, we have been connecting to multiple PLCs over Ethernet, doing produce and consume I.O., reading Ethernet I.O., and probably the most terrifying thing that you can do when you're connected to a larger network is think you're connected to one machine and be connected maybe to the adjacent identical machine. And unfortunately, I have done this probably more times than I'll ever want to admit to. So today I want to go through some ways that we can figure out what machine we are actually connected to in Studio 5000 and what machine we're actually looking at with our eyes. There are two easy ways to do it. Is one, if we could just unplug this Ethernet module, then we could use the PLC tool SIM IPE and we could read this IP address. And I have a video on that, so I'll put it down in the description. The other thing is we do have a USB port here. And if we're super unsure, we should be able to plug directly into it and connect with it. But for this video, let's say that neither of those are options. So this is on a network controlled machine. The machine is running. We cannot interrupt it and we cannot get to that USB port. What are our other options? First would be knowing the IP address of the particular machine. Here's where it can kind of get a little gray with so many devices such as this Compact Logix because it doesn't actually tell you the IP address of it on the front of it. And many times, maybe we can't open cabinets. We're not in close proximity where we can look at it. So let's go through some steps that you can do to make sure that you're online with the right machine. So I'm in Studio 5000 and I am looking at a PLC program and then I'm online. And I can see a few things and I've done a few things just to probably put it in the worst case scenario, I think. And this top left area right here gives us a lot of information. I can see that I have a solid run light. I can see that my IO responding lights flashing and I can see that my force light is flashing. And if we look at the front of our PLC, we see a very similar situation. We have a force light flashing. We have an IO light flashing. So we see some things matching up, but that's definitely not enough to tell us with 100% certainty that we're online with the right PLC. Also, I'll go ahead and say it before someone else does in the comments, is you should never leave forces in your processor when you walk away. They are for a short term check of something. And when you leave, they should be gone. But okay, we have a force light here. And I'll show you something later you can do with the force light though, if it wasn't on. So next, let's go to RS links and just browse the network. Let's see what all we have here. So we'll go to communications and RS who. And we already have our Ethernet IP driver configured. And if you need help configuring that, I have lessons on that. Just look down in the description. But if I open this up, then I have three Compact Logix PLCs, all of them being 1769 L16ERs, and I have three PowerFlex drives. So all those times that I have told you when we're creating a program to name it something memorable, here's where it matters. Now, one thing I don't like is I wish it actually gave you the program name right here. But to get to the program name, we're actually going to hit the plus sign. We're going to get to the point bus point IO. And then if we hit the plus sign into it, we're actually going to get right back to this same processor. But now on the end of it, this is the processor name. And last video, we showed how to create Ethernet IO. And that's what I named it. But from a location standpoint or from a machine identification standpoint, that was a horrible name. So let's open up the next one and drill on into it. And okay, here, this one is named Station 2. And actually that makes a lot of sense here at the PLC lab. There are six stations and yeah, Station 2 is right there. So that tells me, okay, that's where that one is. I can figure that out, but that's not where this one is. And then we have Monday blank which is actually our Monday morning program. So again, it doesn't give us any help identifying where this PLC is. So make sure that you make your program 
memorable. Now, on the front of the Compact Logics, we do have the MAC address, and we're very fortunate they put it right on the front. Let me get a close up of that. It was right here. We have the MAC address, and this should be no, actually. It says ENET address. I don't like that really. It should say MAC address. But right here, it clearly has this number. And this should be unique to this piece of hardware, not this model. This is like the serial number or the social security number of this specific PLC. Now, one thing I've never found in RS Lynx or Studio 5000, and maybe somebody can point it out to me, is I've never actually found where you can see that MAC address in the software. So, but we, here's where we can actually use the SIM IPE for a little help on this, is if we plug in, actually, we can plug in directly to the other port of the Compact Logics or into our Ethernet switch, and we go to read unknown, first, we're going to get all those same devices out there. So, it's not going to give us a clear picture of what the specific PLC is, but we can use it to match the IP address to this MAC address. So this PLC is 5C8816NFB65C, which is the same thing it's showing there. So that does tell us that 192.168.1.111 is this PLC right here. But let's say you don't have a SIM IPE to do that verification with. Well, first of all, you need one. So look down in the description and I'll put a link to it. But let's talk about a few other things we can do to verify that this is the correct PLC. If we go back to Studio 5000, first we could compare our inputs and outputs. But if we have identical machines, they may be the same. But what we can do is we can look at our outputs and we can find an unused output. So if I go to my controller tags and I right click the local colon one colon zero and I go to cross reference, then I'm going to see everywhere it's actually used. Now, the particular program that is in this is not, none of them are used. Now, that would be very unusual, but... We can take an unused output, which in this case, I'm just going to arbitrarily select output number 15. And we can put a one into it. Now, again, it is critical that you make sure that this is not used anywhere. But if I put a one into output 15, then we see output 15 come on. And if I put a zero, it goes back off. So that would give us a good check. But let's say that either there are no spare outputs or we just are not comfortable with that. There are a few other things that we can do. And here's where I kind of butt heads with some of the cybersecurity people who are insisting that we put the processor in run mode. And if it has a key, we remove it is I believe this is a very important safety feature is that right now in Studio 5000, I can see I'm in remote run. Well, the only difference between remote run and run is the key switch position. Now on the Compact Logics, it doesn't actually have a key switch. It has a selector switch here. But if I watch this remote run here, when I select run, you're going to see that it changes to run mode. And if I go back to remote, it goes back to remote. It did not affect the machine's operation, but it did give us an indicator. But again, okay, maybe the key switch isn't there. Maybe the control panel is locked, so you can't get into it. Then the other one that we have which I left on so it was a little more difficult, is we have this force light. Now, we've talked about forces in previous videos, and the flashing force means that forces are installed but not enabled, or means that they're enabled but not installed. Right now, if we go to forces and our I.O. forcing, we can see that there are I.O. forces installed because mainly we have this remove I.O. forces. And also right here by the force light, we can see the forces are disabled, 
but they are installed. Now I threw that one in there just so we couldn't use this option, but since I know that this is a safe thing to remove, I'm gonna remove that force. And now our force light is not flashing here and it's not flashing here. So here's another thing you can do to make sure you're online with the right PLC. Now, again, I don't like forces and please don't leave them in here. And here's another reason not to is if I go up here to our forces and see it says no forces, they're disabled and we have none. If I go to IO forces, and I'm just gonna enable IO forces. Now there's none installed, but when I do that, then our force light is gonna go on solid. So there's just another way that you can make sure you're online with the right PLC. But if there's anything I hope you get out of this video is make your processor names memorable. In other words, if you are working at a Ford plant, please don't name your processor Ford. Make it something that is gonna resemble the machine somehow. And same with your drives and all of that. So I hope this video has been helpful. I'll put a link to the PLC Tools SIM IPE down in the description. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.